Hey there, comic friends. I'm Travis, and it's Talking Comics. That's what I'm going to call it for now, Talking Comics. Anyway, um, these are four books for the week of February 28th, uh, 2024, I want to say. Woo. Just woke up not very long ago. It's it's the terrible time of the year for me. It is um, the uh, setting our clocks forward. I lose an hour. <laughs> I already get up early enough. Just terrible. Anyway, um, let's jump right into it. Our Air Flavors issue number four. Uh, uh, Ram V and um, Philip Andre um, story. Uh, the creators behind um, the May Dessa Layla Star. Um, I'm not. I'm not enjoying this as much as as that book. Um, that book was easily top five book of the year that it came out. Um, I'm really enjoying this though. Um, it centers around food a lot um, and the emotions around that and all of that. I'm not a big food person. Um, I, by and large, um, eat to survive and that's about it. There's a few foods that few foods that excite me, but otherwise, you know, whatever. Um, so that aspect of it is not as strong um, for me as it might be for other people, uh, but still really, really, really enjoying it. Um, we're kind of at a point now where the characters know who each other are and, and all of their um, fallacies. This is a, um, a, um, demon who eats humans um, that's his particular that's his favorite food um, he's trying to not do that quite so much he's being hunted by a group of people um, our videographer here um, he has a story to tell so what's their story together um, curious to see what that is now that it's everything has been exposed for what it is um, yeah uh, definitely definitely um, enjoying enjoying the book um, next up, we'll talk about The Flash. Um, issue number six. Um, I'm just really digging The Flash, um, which is, for me, hilarious to say. I'm not a Flash person, if you've heard me talk about this before. Um, you know, he's kind of the uh, sidekick to everything. Um, he's the sidekick of the, of the Justice League, or whatever, is how he feels to me. I've had some conversations with um, Comic to Comic, CDC, uh, about it, he's a big Flash fan, <laughs> and has told me many times now that Flash is more than that. I just need to give Flash a chance. Um, Cy Spurrier written, um, Didato Jr. artwork on it. The artwork is is amazing. Um, Moville, Moville is the colorist on the book. Let's open up and look at it because the artwork is part of what really grabs me. And I don't know if my camera and my lighting. Got to figure this stuff out a little better. Um, maybe I need one of those influencer rings to put around my camera. Um, but um, I really dig the art. I love the panel work. I love this kind of broken up. Um, there's a lot of different story going on in this. There is um, um, Flash's family life, which I find uh, really interesting. Uh, the, the, his kids, his wife, they've all got their own um, stuff going on. In this issue, we actually get both Barry and Wally uh, for bits and pieces of it, um, so that's pretty cool. How <clears throat> um, about a page that doesn't have advertisements on it? Yeah, but anyway, um, so I'm really in in enjoying this. There's this, you know, he's kind of slipping sideways. He's not in the speed force. He's kind of in some weird um, uh, side dimension, I, I guess, or whatever. Um, his rogues gallery, or a rogues gallery of villains, are, are slowly um, starting to reveal themselves as having um, some impact on all of this. I don't know if they're the big game players or if these archangels uh, that have appeared are, are part of that. Um, these things here are part of the stuff that slips out of this kind of, you know, odd reality that he's, that he's popped himself into. Um, I'm liking all of those, all of those aspects of it. Um, you know, there's some fun science-y type stuff that's thrown in there, which I think is cool. Um, a lot of the unknown, um, a lot of family stuff. Just really all around in enjoying that book quite a bit. Oh, next up. Here we go. Ice Cream Man. 
Uh, issue number 38. I always enjoy Ice Cream Man. Um, it's always a almost always a thought-provoking book in some uh, sense or another. This one is, um, you know, the question in this one is, what's your um, designation? Um, this has to do with Gary. There's a whole bunch of Garys. They live in a walled-off place, and um, you know, clearly they're clones. Um, I think it's Gary 58 or 59 that we follow mostly through this, who spends his day every day raking leaves in the um, eastern quadrant of uh, the area that they live in. There are no trees, but every day there are leaves for him to um, um, sweep, and he slowly, um, through the help of some other Garys, discovers himself, discovers there's other stuff. Um, I just, I always, like I said, I always really enjoy Ice Cream Man. It's, it, yeah, it's such a different book. I, I'm sometimes curious if they've just thrown out the door. I, I, at one point, they, they flirted with the idea that there was a, some larger plot, um, that, you know, the Ice Cream Man, and then there was a kind of a black-hatted cowboy guy, and there was potentially some story between them, and that's all kind of not really, um, um, touched on anymore, and I don't even know if it will. I don't know if that was the kind of oh, you know, to to to, to help hang on to the people who are afraid to read a book that doesn't have a a larger story. Um, well, it, it the book has a larger story though. I mean, I, I think I, I think it has larger themes anyway. I don't know if it has a larger story, but the book has themes to it, and I don't know if they if they had that other stuff in there to try and keep people on board who thought that they needed a a, a plot. To attach each uh, issue to each issue, um, I don't know. What do you think? I just, like I said, always, always enjoy this book. It always has something thought provoking to it, um, even if it's just generally disturbing to go, "Yep, that's society today," or or whatever, or um, you know, it, it dives more personal or or whatever. Um, just really always uh, a good book, um, a book that I I recommend to anybody who's open to um, just reading something and thinking about. You know what's there? Um, what 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 are the possibilities? Um, yeah. Uh, next up, we have the Immortal Thor. This is issue number seven. Um, Loki is telling Thor a story about a time that they in their past. Uh, the the story is being manipulated out from under them um, to some degree, and we also have this side story of the Minotaur character, which I cannot remember his name right now who actually showed up in uh, Immortal Hulk also. Um, he is he is making his own comic um, to manipulate the story and um, um, to manipulate Thor. Um, he has enlisted the help of people like the Enchantress to help him with that story. Um, so we're going to get a second comic book um, that's going to come out that's going to tell the corporate story, the corporate Thor uh, story. I am choosing not to pick that up. Maybe that ends up being a mistake for me. Uh, I believe it's only a few issues. I didn't realize that when it first was solicited. Um, I couldn't. I didn't see any clear information on it, so I didn't pick it up. And so maybe that was a mistake um, to get that little piece of the story. But I also find it frustrating that they couldn't tell that story in this comic. Um, anyway, I, I'm I'm in, I'm enjoying it. It's it's a fun story about story. Um, well, we'll see where it goes. I'm not as enamored with it as like I was with the, um, um, Immortal Hulk. These are all characters that are, yeah, they're fine characters, but not characters that I explore deeply. Um, so this has been entertaining for that, um, purpose. And it's got lots of Loki in it. And I like the current Loki and they handle the current Loki in a way that I like the, the very fluid yoke Loki, um, you know, both, both in gender and in age and in and in story and in purpose in the story. So, liking that. Um, here we go. World Tree. This is issue number what? Eight? Uh, issue number eight. We're starting up a new arc. Um, and um, the main... Well, the, our group of hackers have basically kind of been given their marching orders and... and, and finances and they have to decide exactly what they're going to do um our agent here um it continues to find herself deeper and deeper in the bad 
um, the internet is shut down. Um, there's just all kinds of really cool stuff going on in the book. Uh, the art in it is is excellent. It really has, if you're old school like me, it really has the um, vertigo vibe to it. It just need the old vertigo vibe to it. It just needs the the grittier paper, um, <laughs> and then it would be, and then it would definitely, um, it would definitely be. It would definitely be be that. Um, I just yeah, uh, interesting comic. I'm I'm really curious to see where uh, you know, where the story goes, what's going on with society and, and everything. Um, the um, hot punk naked lady that's been running around through all of the issues or most of the issues up in this. She's wearing clothes now. I don't know if I don't know what if that's just because or if it's like okay now that we've you know now that we've um got all those guys and gals with hormones <laughs> in the book we don't need to have her walking around naked all the time or or what um but um she's still cool well i guess she's kind of there in the in the cover and she's not really wearing clothes there um but she's clearly dressed like a punk at the end right yeah anyway um this is kind of cool. There's this under internet, this under net that is um, actually transforms people. If you get exposed to it, it literally at, at times will break you out of reality. Um, you you get this kind of you know crazy blur. There's the cover for the next issue. This guy is broken out of that uh, of our reality to some degree, or he's I don't know. They don't know exactly. It's it's we don't know, and I like that. It's but it's really cool. Um, uh, um, dark look at a fantasiful reality. Ooh, New Burn, issue number 15. This book has to be coming to, uh, to an end um, soon. Um, what is going on in, in this issue is just absolutely um, um, tense. Tense. The crime families are crashing down on people. Newbert is um, playing his cards to keep himself alive, um, to keep his um, protege alive. Um, he, he's trying to set some things in motion. I don't believe they've gone exactly the way he wants to, uh, but it, we find out that Newbert is extremely hardcore, um, and it's quite quite enjoyable. Uh, Chip Sardowski, um, Jacob Phillips' uh, book. Um, I, I definitely recommend it. There's plenty of trades out. Um, scoop up a trade, read it, see what you think. Um, it's 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 good stuff. It's it's yeah, just some good kind of noirish um, stuff going on in it. Um, monstrous um, issue number forty nine. Um, I by and large, anytime if you've ever seen me talk about this book even years ago, because this book has been around for quite a while now. Um, Talk about how it, it's a gorgeous looking book. Um, it lots of times feels very slow. It takes a long time to get to where um, it feels like it's going. Um, this issue ramps everything up. Everything is definitely moving now. Uh, a massive amount of time has passed. Um, our main characters are back in their real world as opposed to the prison world that they were in. Um, and um, we are past the point of war, or there's more war. Um, um, there's people people in the party who are separated that we didn't think could be separated. Um, just lots of really cool stuff going on. Um, this, like I said, this issue was exciting to read. Not just a, a, a pretty um, kind of a thing. This is still a book I recommend if you haven't started picking it up. Uh, you know, pick it up in trades. That would be the strongest way to read it. Um, I bet it is awesome that way. But it, it is, it is gorgeous. I'm not going to flip through any pages because I think there's plenty of spoilers in it, but it is a beautiful book. Um, as always, by um, Marjorie Liu and Santa Kakata. Bad on me. Someday I will take a course on pronouncing names, or I'll, I don't know, is there a, a program somewhere that will tell you what those names are, and then I have to remember them while I talk? Okay, issue, this is Detective Comics, issue number um, 1082. Uh, still really digging this. Um, the, 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 the Batman is um, venturing through the desert, um, trying to get a grasp on reality. Um, 
so he, so he can make it back. I mean, he's on he's on death's door, um, physically and mentally, um, and and this is him questioning who he is and who the bat is. And you know, like I said, themes we've explored many many times in in Batman. Um, I think this is doing a really good job of that. The story that led us to this um, felt different and and fresh and and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so I don't mind us exploring some of these themes over again um, when it's, you know, it's different. Um, it's a different take on it. Um, it's got good old Dr. Hurt in there. There's a backup story in here that, that has to do with, um, with Hurt, which is also uh, interesting. Hurt's a uh, mentally devastating uh, character. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm enjoying it. The themes that have been addressed before, um, but I, I think it's, um, I think it's done, done well, done interesting here. Um, like I said, I, I really like the lead up to this, and I'm really curious to see the, the take going out the other side, uh, while Batman is on his, his, um, his, um, uh, I don't know if it's a quest. <laughs> It, to get better, uh, to, to break out of the, the trap that he is currently in, in Gotham, um, Gotham has kind of forgotten who it is to a large degree. They're they're forgetting who the Bat is. Um, there are a few people left that are trying to hold on to that. Um, um, Cassie Kane is is Batgirl. That kind of keeps to some degree in people's minds something about the Bat. Um, the question is in is in this. Uh, Montoya is not spending much time doing police work. Um, she's doing work as the um, as the question, trying to figure out the murder of a um, of a detective that she sent to do some work that he didn't want to do, and it ended up costing him his life. Um, and in that, she's trying to remember what Gotham was. Um, yeah, so good stuff. Good stuff. Phantom Road, issue number, what are we at? Nine? Uh, Jeff Lemire, uh, Gabriel Waltala, Jody Belair um, book. Um, Trying to think how I want to talk, how to talk book. I'm really enjoying it. Um, this is another book that has like this other reality that's like right next to ours. There's something going on. Um, there's, I love this cover. All black and white, green coming from the open door of the hotel room where um, um, something is hatching that two characters are um, um, responsible for. Birdie and I want to say the truck driver's name is Carl because he feels like a Carl kind of a person. I don't remember if his name is actually Carl because um, Dom. His name is Dom uh, because um, I read these last week. Anyway, um, excellent art as always. Um, if you're a, a fan of Gabriel Walta, which I am, uh, our police detective, our FBI uh, detective is still having uh, serious problems. She keeps having massive flashbacks about happened to her as a child. That stuff that happened to her as a child is relevant to this alternate reality thing that's going on. Um, we, we, we finally get the background, the trauma, um, that we've that's been hinted at with our two main characters, Dom and Birdie. Um, why, kind of why they're 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 carrying themselves the way they are. Um, that they're clearly both holding uh, dark secrets in. We get that in this issue. Uh, what that is, which is really interesting, and we get it in a way that each other know each other's trauma. They are like in a dreamlike state or in each other's memories. And so they kind of ride along for that traumatic moment. Um, so they, as characters, I believe now have a, a, a much deeper connection um, to um, each other. Um, here, here we are after they've had their dreams together. Um, it's just really good. The whole alien alternate reality vibe to it is really interesting to see what is going to happen. Um, they are attacked, or, or I don't know if they're attacked, or it's a secret government SWAT team attempts to get them. Um, that team meets a terrible ending, um, and it seems like 
the thing that they're helping possibly is responsible for the tariff collecting to those to those um, guys. Anyway, excellent comic. My only thing is, and I'll talk about this. I don't know how much I've talked about this. Um, my only caveat with the book is, is I'm concerned because it's Jeff Lemire written. <gasps> I know a lot of indie book people are going to um, are going to freak out over that. Um, I just feel like this is my, you know, my opinion and feeling about about um, Lemire is lots of times he writes these kinds of books, and then if he suddenly decides he's bored with it, or I don't know, I mean, I'm just guessing he, he's bored with it. Um, it's got a TV deal. Um, it's I don't know what. Um, he just suddenly bails on it and just kind of bails on the story, and then like you know tissues, we get a slapdash you know, end to whatever was going on when clearly if you read interviews with him or his own back matter and his own books, talking about how a story's gonna go on for a long time. Um I'm trying to think of a it's a fireflies? Was that the name no that's not the name of the book. It's the book with a kid that drowned. Royal City. Right there's an ad for it. Royal City. To me felt that way. You know, we get all this stuff, oh we're gonna tell a story, tell a basic story, um some excellent emotional beats in that book. Don't get me wrong. There's some great, great stuff in it. Um, tell some backstory, and then all of a sudden it was done. But halfway through that stuff, there was stuff writing about how he's going to be doing this for a long time or whatever. And so I'm always worried when I'm picking up a Jeff Lemire book that it's going to just suddenly end. I feel like um, as much as I like Gideon Falls, I kind of felt like it was the same way also. There was a rush to the end of it. Um, I'm not picking up any of the stuff that the creative team from Gideon Falls is doing just because I'm concerned uh, about that. Probably a mistake. There's probably some really good horror stuff in there. Um, the the Jeff Lemire books that's advertising here, I think it's I think it is Fireflies, right? That's written and drawn by him. I'm, I'm not picking that up. Um, I'm not picking up <sighs> it's a Deadly Little Creatures. He's got a couple books and I'm just, I'm not. And the reason I'm not is because I have this fear of I'm going to get invested in the book and then he's going to we're, you know, not that he got canceled. I don't think any of them got canceled. Um, he chose to go and do something else. So, about the draw of the um, of the um, Walta art drew me into this. I hope we get the full thing. It's been really interesting so far. It feels like a book that's going to take a while to really tell all that story. Um, so I hope that they take the time and 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 actually do it. And of course, people are going to say, "Oh, but you know, he has." Um, um, oh, what's the Vertigo book with Gus? I'm drawing, I'm drawing a blank on the name, which is 50 issues. You know, so it can be done. He can write a long series, but I also understand that having wrote that long thing was a massive burnout. So, anyway, that's my take on Jeff Lemire. Like the guy, like the work he does, um, just not willing to invest in um, time and the money in singles. Um, when I'm not sure that it's going to, um, it's not going to follow through or something like that. Oh, uh, last issue we're going to talk about here is Slow Burn. This is issue number five of five, the end of the book. Um, like the beginning better than when we get to the end. Uh, decent ending story. I still feel like we could have gotten something possibly different than there was one issue. There was a lot of character beats about dad. And I don't know that we needed to know that much about Dad uh, to get the story that we got here. Um, if you're reading this, let me know. Am, am I wrong? Do you feel like we needed that? Um, I haven't talked with the disembodied voice about this book yet. She is a little under a month behind me in reading. Hopefully she'll catch up at some point, and maybe she'll come and chat if people are still interested in, in hearing that other voice um, argue with me about um, books. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, Oliver Masters written. He wrote The Kitchen, which got turned into uh, a, a Netflix show or movie. Um, I enjoyed The Kitchen. Um, artist on the book. I'm not even going to. Per, Perry Lugi, Lugi, Luigi uh, Minonette. Yeah, no. I'm sorry. If your name isn't Joe Smith, I'm kind of screwed, right? Um, enjoy the artwork in it. Lots of craziness happens here at the end of this issue. Um, you know, 
people there are people who don't make it um, some of those people you know should have made it they're probably the good people um, some of the bad people didn't make it um, yeah it's um, it's good it's good I I, I, I was a, it was a solid it was a solid story it was definitely a solid story um, like I said there was that issue in the middle of the series that I don't know I mean, it was a fine issue. I just don't know that. I just don't know that we needed it. There was another one that told one of the characters. There's an old man in this that's kind of lost his memory. He's clearly um, suffering dementia. Um, getting his um, backstory was important. It was tied to enough other things that it felt like it mattered. Um, I don't know. I'll be rereading this. I'm. I'm sure. Um, now that it's all done, to see maybe maybe now that I reread it, those that that issue hits me differently. It's sound like I'm just critical of it because of that one issue. I enjoyed the book. And that is it. Under half an hour for, what, 11 books or whatever? That's pretty good. Um, I'm trying to keep it kind of short. Still practicing. I'm not sure exactly what I want to talk about when I'm talking about myself uh, about the books. Other than to say, once again, hey, I read these books. All right. Um, have a great one, everybody. Hope you had a good weekend or whenever it is you watch this thing. I guess I shouldn't date it. Um, and um, see you next week. Talk more books.